Let's take a look at the system property called time invariance, and especially how to determine whether or not a system is time invariant. Time invariance is a system property. It's also known as shift invariance. And the notion of shifting the signal is really critical to understanding what time invariance really means. Let's begin by considering a system T. The system has an input X that produces an output Y. And the output is formed by the system T operating on the input X. That's what the notation means here. T operates on X to produce the output Y. Now to look at whether or not the system has the property called time invariance, let me begin by adding a shift operator on the output side of the system T. Say T forms Y of N, it passes through the shift operator, and that will then give us the modified output that I'll call Y sub A of N. Let's consider this shift operator S operating on an input X to produce an output Y. The shift operator delays the input by an amount N naught. So it simply delays the input. Therefore, y of n to produce y sub a is y of n minus n naught. It's the delayed version of the output y. Now we see that the shifting here is happening after the system operator t. Therefore, I'm calling this the post-shift version. Now let's flip this around. Supposing we do the shift operation before we apply it to the operator t. Let's call that output y sub b of n. Here x of n passes through the shift operator to produce x of n minus n naught, and then that passes through the system t. Therefore, t is operating on a delayed version of the input. Here we can think of this as being the shifted or delayed version of x after it's been operated on by t. So we had on the top the post-shifted version, here we have the pre-shifted version. The notion of time invariance says that if these two are the same for all values of n, that is for all time, then the system is said to be time invariant, again also called shift invariant. This is a biconditional meaning that if this property holds, then we know that y, uh, y sub a and y sub b are equal for all time. Let's see how to apply this with a couple examples. Here I have a system that operates on x by taking the current x value and multiplying it by the previous x value. Let's try it on the post-shift version first x passes through the system to produce x of n times x of n minus 1, and then we shift that by an amount n naught. Now we need to subtract n naught from every expression that involves n. Take x of n minus 1 and subtract n naught. All right, let's try this now on the pre-shifted version. Here's my delayed version of the x, and then we'll pass that through the system operator t. The system operator says take the current input, which I'll call now x of n minus n naught, and then we multiply it by the previous input. Now let's compare these two results, y a and y b. Are they equal to each other? Well, clearly these are the same, and these are also the same if we simply swap the order here. That's a valid math operation. Therefore, we conclude that since y of a is equal to y of b for all time n, the system must be time invariant. Let's try this out on a second example. 
Here the system operator is operating on x by multiplying it by a sine of n. This gives us sine of n times x of n. Now we need to subtract n naught from each n expression as I'm doing here. Now let's pass x of n through the shift operation first. This is our pre-shifted version. Then we'll pass that through the system t. Now let's think this through. We see that the system multiplies any and all inputs by sine of n. But our input in the lower track here is x of n minus n naught. Then we ask ourselves, are these the same? Well, those are the same. However, we see this portion of our output equation is not the same. Ya is not equal to Yb, therefore we conclude that the system T is not time invariant. Now before I leave this example, I'd like to point out another way to establish the proof. That is, we can prove lack of time invariance by a counterexample. That is, if I can find a specific input x for which Ya is not equal to Yb, then we can prove lack of time invariance. Sine of n times delta of n. Well, the delta function is zero except when n equals zero, but n equals zero is precisely when sine is, of n is equal to zero. Therefore, the output on the top track is zero. With the pre-shifted version of the delta function passing through the system operator, we have sine of n times delta of n minus n naught. Now the question is, is this equal to zero for all time? Well, we know that the delta function is zero except at n equals n naught. However, sine of n naught is not equal to zero, at least for n naught not equal to zero. Therefore, we found a specific example where ya and yb are not equal to each other. And from this, we conclude that the system is not time invariant. All right, that wraps up a couple of examples, and hopefully you have a better understanding of time invariance.